We're going to talk about parts of similar triangles. So we're going to talk about different parts of a triangle and then how they create some proportional sections so we can cross multiply and solve. So if we have an altitude, altitude meaning height, um, it has to be perpendicular, just like it's shown here. Okay, that has to happen. And if that is the case, then those are altitudes and they're going to create proportional parts. The proportional parts are going to be the altitude itself. BD over the other altitude, FH, equal to basically any other pair of corresponding sides, um, but we'll use for an example AB and FE because they're going to be corresponding. Um, but you could have also used BC and FG or that whole long base or the little base AD and EH. All right, angle bisectors, that means it's cutting the angle into two equal parts. So here's your angle bisector, here's your angle bisector, and angle Q has been cut into two equal parts, and U has been cut into two equal parts. What this does is I can make a fraction of my actual angle bisectors themselves, QS, and U double that I drew in purple. And then you can do any other section to be in proportion to it. So why don't we just do QP and UT. We need to be able to cross multiply and solve that. A median goes through a vertex and cuts the opposite side into equal parts. It bisects the segment, okay, through a triangle. So those are medians. So you can put your medians into a ratio and then set that equal to any other set of sides. So let's do GH and KL. And notice that we're doing all corresponding parts, so they're in the same position for each of the triangles. So we'll do a little bit of practice on that. Okay. So between these two triangles, we have the meeting, the medium, and then we have two equal sides or corresponding sides for each one. And so we'll kind of get to pick and choose a little bit, but I know I want my median, which is SW, in a fraction with my other median, which is 15. Then I just need a pair of corresponding sides. So you have options. We can choose the 16 or the 19.2. Um, just make sure it has something corresponding other. So if you look at 16 and you look at 20, they're both the shorter of the two sides in each triangle that's given. And you can also check that TS, which is my 16, corresponds with DE because they're in the same position in the similarity statement. So X is from the same triangle 16, so they'll be across from each other. And 20 is from the same triangle 15. And I will be able to cross multiply and solve. So that I can get x is equal to 12. All right. In the next one we have an altitude. I know it's an altitude because um, from the vertex to the side opposite of it, it's perpendicular, means the height. So I have this altitude of 10 and I have this altitude of 8. So then I need a pair of corresponding sides um, and I only have one set of sides. I have IH, which is x, and I need x. X and 10 are from the same figure, and 14 is from the other. And we need to double check to make sure they're actually corresponding. So IH, which is my X, should be in the same position as LK, which is that 14. So we're good to go. Across multiply and solve. So that I can get X is equal to 17.5. And you will see some decimals here and there, so don't be alarmed. On number three, we have an angle bisector. It means it cuts the angle into equal parts. So C has been cut into equal parts and F has been cut into equal parts. So this angle bisector is 32, and I will put it in a fraction with the other angle bisector, 24. And then I will do the corresponding side. So from the triangle that has 32, I have a side of 38, A and C. And A and C correspond with E and F, which I have over here which is x, and I'll be able to cross, multiply, and solve. Divide both sides by 32, and I will get x is equal to 28.5. Last one on this page, we have an altitude. It looks kind of weird because it's an altitude of an obtuse, so the altitude happens to be outside of it, but it still follows the same rule, so I'll put my altitudes in a fraction together, and then I'll do a pair of corresponding sides. X 
is in the same uh, figure as 12, and it is Q and P, and Q and P corresponds with U and T in the other triangle, and that is 42. So you can kind of double check 12 and X are across from each other and they're in the same figure, 15 and 42 are across from each other in the same figure. So now we can cross multiply and solve. So 12 times 42 and 15 times X. And I will get X equals 33.6. To the next one. This one's a little different if you notice that I don't have just an x. I have an x with some multiplication and subtraction, um, but it still will work in the same manner. We have this median. Okay, Median goes through the middle of the side opposite of it from a vertex, so that median is 20, and the median that corresponds with it is x minus 5. From the same figure that has 20, I have this segment, yc, which is 2x minus 9. If you go to your similarity statement, YC corresponds with LH, and I have LH as 15. Okay, I will cross multiply and solve so that I have 20 times 15 is 300. And you would have to FOIL this out, and it's good practice to do. So I would do X times 2X, um, which is 2X squared. And I would do x times negative 9, which is negative 9x. Then I'll distribute the negative 5 through. So I have negative 10x and negative 5 times negative 9 is probably 4 or 5. Um, since this has a leading coefficient not of 1, you won't be expected to solve problems like that. But I did want you to make sure you could see how it would set up. Because sometimes um, you won't have an x squared and you would be able to solve it a little easier. Now we're going to talk about angle bisector the angle bisector theorem within a triangle. And what that says is the angle bisector, not only does it do the proportions like we saw up here, okay, where you use your actual angle bisector as part of it, but you don't, you can do a proportion without knowing the measure of the angle bisector. And that makes it to where all these four segments around the triangle are proportional if you had angle bisector. So I don't have to know BD. And so how that works is I would have AD this one here, it'll be proportional to this part, DC. Okay, Since AD is in the triangle on the left, I will have AB, which is also on the triangle on the left, across from it. And since DC is on the right, I will have this side, BC, over here. So instead of having two separate triangles like we had up here, we have one triangle that is split into two triangles using an angle bisector, and it still creates proportional parts. So I will set up a proportion. So I'm going to do 4.8, this section here, just like I did in the actual theorem, and this section here, the two parts of the base that are split in two, not equally, the side's not split equally, the angle's split equally, equal to 4.8 is from the same triangle that has 12, and X is from the same triangle that has 18. So if you look, the numerators are both from the triangle on the left, and the denominators are both from the triangle on the right. I can now cross multiply and solve this. Divide both sides by 12. Now we'll get x is equal to 7.2. Okay. On number 7, same kind of thing. What I'll do is I'll pick this side, 40, over this side, 36. So the segment that's split into two, I put them in a fraction together. And 40 is from the same figure that has 54. And x is from the same figure that has 36, so 40 and 54 are across from each other, and 36 and x are across from each other. Cross multiply and solve. Get kind of big numbers here, that's okay. Divide both sides by 40, and you'll get x is equal to 48.6. Now number eight's a little different. They didn't give me this section. And normally I would have 15 over that section, so I need to know that. What I can do to find that section is I'll do 39 minus the 15 that I've used up. Okay, and when I do 39 minus 15, I'll be able to get 24. So this measure is 24, so I'll put those two sections in a fraction together, 15 over 24. In the same figure of X, that kind of triangle that's kind of on the left, 
is 15 and X are in the same figure, and 24 and 36 are in the same figure. But you couldn't use 39. You have to use the parts. That's what this theorem uses. And so I will cross multiply and solve so that I have 15 times 36, which is 540, equal to 24X. Divide both sides by 24 so that I'll get X is equal to 22.5. The next one is kind of like that, except for my full length is not the number I know. The section is the number I know. But you're going to do it in the same manner. Okay, if you noticed over here, I did 39 minus 15. I did the whole length minus the part. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the whole length, which is X, minus the part. So I'll have X minus 12 there. I'll do that because when I solve it, I'll be able to find X. Okay, So the full length is X, and I'm going to subtract out the part I know. Just like on number 8, the full length was 39, and I subtracted out the part I knew, 15. So I'll do my proportion the same way. I'm going to use 12, which is this section, over its corresponding section in the other triangle, X minus 12 equal to 18 is from the same figure as 12 over 30, same figure as x minus 12. And so if you look, 12 and 18 are from the same figure, x minus 12 and 30 are from the same figure. I will cross multiply, okay, so that I get um, 30 times 12, which is 360. Okay. And then I will be that equal, and I have to distribute this 18. I'm going to go ahead and just write it with parentheses so that we make sure that we distribute it correctly. So 18 times x minus 12. So I'll have 360 equals, distribute the 18, 18 x minus 12 times 18, which is 216. I'll add 216 to both sides, which is 576 equals 18x, divide both sides by 18, and I will get the answer of x is equal to 32. Sounds a little bit harder because you're not going to just have x, you're going to have x plus or minus some value. In this case it was minus. Okay, let's use this last one and we'll be done. It's going to use the same theorem. So I have this part and it needs to be divided by this part, but I don't know that part, but I can find it by taking the whole thing, minusing what I knew. Just like on 8, we did the whole thing 39 minus 15, and on 9, we did the whole thing x minus 12. In this case, doing the whole thing 45 minus 27, um, which will leave me with 18. And then I'll put them in fractions. So 27 over 18 is equal to 27 is from the same figure as 3x minus 9, so they need to be across from each other. And x plus 11 is from the same figure as 18. And I will cross multiply and solve. So I'll have 27x plus, and then I'll have to distribute. Let's go ahead and write it with parentheses so we make sure that we distribute correctly when I cross multiply. And so I'll have 27x, and then I'll do 27 times 11, which is 297, and 18 times 3, 54x, minus 18 times 9. And then I'll need to combine like terms. So I'm going to minus this 27x over here, and at the same time I'm going to add this 162 over here. So those cancel. And so, oops. Marked out the wrong thing. And so when I add 297 plus 162, I'll get 459. And 54 minus 27 is 27. Divide both sides by 27. And I will get x is equal to 17. And it, and it says in the directions to find KL, so make sure you're always reading the directions because before they just wanted to solve for x. So now that I have x equals 17, I need to find K and L. And KL is this measurement here. So KL is equal to x plus 11 
and in my case, that'll be 17 plus 11. So 28 is the correct answer.